Reading and data and processing is pretty neat in itself. However, many times we would also like to write some data. And writing data is pretty similar to reading data. First, we will read in the Titanic dataset, change some columns, and then write it to different formats. So first, let's read in the CSV file. So I'm going to say Titanic is equal to spark.read.format CSV. Set some options, which will be the separator should be a comma. The header should be true. And we want to infer the schema. We're going to load it from the local file system on a home spark titanic.csv. And let's add two columns, the name in capital letters and the fair as a log value. And for this, we will import the PySpark functions and then use them to make the necessary adjustments. So we're going to say import PySpark.sql.functions as f. And then we're going to say Titanic is equal to Titanic with column. And that will be the name in uppercase. So we're going to insert we're going to use the upper function on the name column and we're going to create another column which will be fair underscore lock and we're going to use the lock function on the fair column and let's have a look at that data frame Actually, let's take a look at those columns we just created. All right, that looks good. So as you can see, we made some changes to the data set. And of course, this is not really rocket science, but processing is not the point of this video. Now, uh, you have your data frame and maybe you want to write this. So let's say we want to write this as a CSV file again. So let's say Titanic. Actually, let me skip clear the screen so we're going to say titanic dot write dot format because we want to write it as a csv file we're going to set options again here we only set the separator which should be a comma and we save it to the local file system under home spark titanic underscore new dot csv and that just writes the csv file and you really have to take a good look to actually see the difference to uh, reading data. So first of all, I'm using less options. And second of all, I'm now using the save, not the load method. Save is used to write your data to your sync. So let's have a look at how this looks in our Linux system. So let's open up a new terminal. Let's log in as the Spark user. I'm going to run ls. And here we have titanic underscore new dot csv. But do you see something weird? It's a folder, not a single file. Now, what is in that folder? So let's say ls titanic underscore new dot csv. Now here we have a success and a part file, which is just a csv file. Now all of them serve different purposes, but first let me explain why Spark is not creating a single file. Now the most distinct feature of Spark is that it is distributed. That means the work is spread across multiple nodes inside a cluster. If you have multiple computers that work in different parts of a dataset, how can you write all of this into a single file? Well, it turns out you can't. The whole point of Spark is to handle data that is too large to fit into a single machine. Hence, every partition of the data will be written into its own file. And this is why you have these part blah 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 dot csv file or files. Now, um, these part files hold the actual data. And since the schema is the same, you can treat this as one large data frame. And way earlier, I have shown you that you can read in an entire folder containing data. And that is exactly the reason why you can do that. Data is written into folders. Right now, there is only one part file because we have such a small data set and we only have one worker. However, let's repartition the data into five partitions before writing it to CSV. So let me remove the titanic underscore new folder first. And then we're going to say titanic dot repart sorry, repartition. And we're going to repartition it into five partitions. And then we say write. The format should be CSV. 
we're going to say options. We want to set the separator to a comma. We're going to say save. And again, we want to save it to the local file system under home, spark, titanic, underscore new dot CSV. Let's have a look into that folder now. So let's open up the other terminal session again. And let's have a look in that, into that folder. And as you can see, um, a CSV file was written for every single partition. I said repartition the data into five partitions and we got five CSV files here. Now, another important file is the success file, this file down there. Uh, let's say you are in a situation where you want to react to data as soon as it arrives. Now, if you would write it with Spark, you would trigger this as soon as the first part file is being written. This, however, is a problem. Maybe this is just a very small partition and the other files will be written into that folder later on. And this is why we have the success file. This is just an empty file. However, its presence in a folder indicates that the write has been complete. So you could, for example, add another condition in your trigger, which is watching the folder saying that the success file must be available for the trigger to actually run. Um, the same is also true for other data formats. So let's write our Titanic dataset into Parquet. So let's take the Titanic dataset and let's just select the name and the fair column because um, one of those column names gives me a bit of trouble when writing it to Parquet, but this should work. We're gonna write, we're gonna say Parquet because we want to write it into a Parquet file. And we write it into the home directory, spark titanic underscore new dot parquet. Notice I did not repartition my data, so I would I would assume that this will also write just a single part file because there will probably be only a single partition. All right, let's write this. Let's have a look in our terminal again. And again, we have a folder. So the folder is titanic underscore new dot parquet and let's inspect the content of that folder. So let's say titanic new dot parquet. And here we have the same structure as before. We have the actual data in the part file or part files if you have multiple partitions and a success file indicating that the write has been successful. Of course, you're not limited to writing data to files. You can also write data into databases via JDBC and it basically follows the same principles as when reading data from JDBC. So we can go ahead and say Titanic dot write and the format will be JDBC. And then I need to set some options. And the first option we're gonna set is we're gonna give it the JDBC URL and that will be JDBC colon PostgreSQL. And remember from earlier that I'm actually running a Postgres server on this machine. So if you don't have a Postgres server running, that's not gonna work on your machine. Real set some more options so I'm gonna say option is DB table so what table do you want to write to well we want to write to a table called Titanic inside the tutorial database of course which you can see over there um, then we're gonna give some more options so the next option we set is the user we want to use for this operation that would be Postgres and of course, we got to give it the password. So the password is just test. And we need to specify which driver we want to use, which is org.postgresql.driver. And one last command, which is just save. This was basically the same syntax as when we read the data from PostgreSQL. Um, the only difference is that we don't use load, but save in the end. And of course, it is a method on the Titanic data frame and not on the Spark session instance. Uh, remember that you need to add the JDBC driver jar when starting Py the PySpark shell. If you're unsure about how to do that, check out my video on reading data into Spark. There I'll go into detail what, we, what you have to do. So let's check that this was successful by going to PSQL and printing that table. So let's create a new terminal. We're gonna lock in as the Postgres user. Now we go into PSQL. Let me maximize this. 
And we are now in the PostgreSQL shell. And let's use the tutorial database and select everything from the Titanic table. So I'm gonna say C because we wanna use the tutorial database. So we are now connected to the tutorial database as user Postgres. And let's actually list the tables that are available in there. So we have one table, which is called Titanic. And let's just say select star from Titanic, semicolon, and there you go. Here we have all these rows in our um, data frame. So that's actually quite a lot. Let's just select the columns we created, which was name underscore upper and fair underscore lock from Titanic. And there it is. As you can see, that worked. We, we created these columns earlier on. So that looks good. And it even saved the schema we had. So just as with sources, there are many more things you can write data to. Even if it is not built into Spark, there is a whole bunch of connectors available so that you can connect Spark with your things.